Hey, Justin Dyson here, Dyson Apiaries. Um, we're about two weeks from our main spring honey flow, and today we're gonna to talk about taking these colonies back to a single deep brood chamber and supering them and getting ready um, for the spring flow. Stick right with us. All right, so before we open this colony, we'll talk about just a couple things. Um, again, I like to run my colonies through the flows with just a single deep um, for a brood chamber, and then all surplus supers above that, whatever size they may be. Uh, and, you know, it makes it a little easier to move, um, a little easier to manage. If we have some stuff going on, we can, we can easily get there, and we know where the queen's at. But a single deep, honestly, is, is big enough for, for a queen. The queen can't possibly lay more than a single deep. We do see that, you know, the, the clusters typically round up into the next box up. But what we see when we run the single deeps, if we time it just right, the bees get really efficient and that bottom deep just becomes plugged out with brood. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. And today is kind of, we're, we're like maybe two weeks from our main spring flow, give or take a week. Um, and so we're gonna be setting these colonies up to just be absolutely busting uh, when that flow hits. And also we're gonna take the entire apiary uh, and we're gonna kind of make them all the same. And if there are any spare resources, we'll pull them off and we'll make nukes, we'll make, uh, we'll make you know, complete hive splits, whatever, and we'll take resources from each other to just kind of balance everything up right. That way this entire apiary is basically the same. Um, it's kind of our last, our last time we're going to be digging down through this colony, uh, you know, as we get until after the flow, honestly. So big management time right now and, and the last one that we're going to be hitting. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this colony and we'll talk through it. Just based off the entrance of this one, this one looks like it's a little bit weaker than some of the other ones I've had. And again, that's part of this strategy is just kind of setting everything up the same. Yeah, this one's definitely weaker. So we're gonna kind of take a modified method of whether or not we have to find the queen or not. Um, if we don't find the queen, we back up and punt. So as we see, this colony's all shifted to one side. Um, just not quite as strong as some of the other ones that were just plugged out and ready to swarm. So we'll go ahead and, and work through this one because this is one of our, uh, one of the things we're managing for here too is kind of getting these weaker colonies up to where they need to be and so these empty frames i'm just going to set them aside we'll get them out of the way and what i want to do is i want to find a nice fat frame of honey and honey and pollen mix is great um, right against this outside wall because we still don't have a, a big amount of nectar coming in um, so and that one will do for one side. It's got a, a good solid amount of honey on one side. Um, and that'll also serve. I like to leave like one frame empty in the middle just to keep that queen laying because we're still about two weeks away and we don't want that this hive to go into swarm mode. So now we have some nice brood and I am looking for the queen and I just found her, which is great. Um, right here's my queen. So. I'm gonna go ahead and deal with her, put her over here, because these two frames are staying. So now I have honey and then brood. And what we're gonna do is work to have brood on about eight frames, maybe one empty, depending on what the colony looks like. Um, and we're just gonna plug them right across. If we have any bad frames, we'll go ahead and get them out of the bottom right now. This is, like I said, this is uh, probably the most intensive piece of management we'll do for the year in the spring yeah this colony is just kind of they're kind of weak but we're gonna fix it <clears throat> so got 
Let's see what they got in the top. I've already found my queen, so that's positive. It makes life a lot easier. One of the things to be careful about this time of year is robbing. They really want to start robbing. Now this frame here is not quite drawn out. I don't want to put that in the bottom because they, they seem to never finish drawing it out, but it does have eggs in it, so we're going to save that. You'll see when we get into some stronger colonies, one of the things I try to do is, you see these frames are a little older than this one. I'm trying to rotate some of these newer frames down here in the bottom of this colony because we will, uh, we will cycle some of the older frames out. We always kind of have a mix, nice new frame. We always have kind of a mix in our nukes that we sell. They'll have a, a few new frames and a few, you know, only a couple years old frames, but we don't sell any frames that are 10 years old or nothing here, but we have another frame brewed and mixed. And so what I've done, I've already set some colonies up over here with brood and everything above a queen excluder. Um, so I'm gonna go grab a couple frames of brood. This is part of the balancing piece. I'm gonna grab another frame of brood from another colony and that fills that out. And now what I wanna do is find a nice fat full frame of honey. Make sure this colony set up nicely. And so now they have the same thing as every colony, even though they were weaker when we started. A lot of that brood is, we're, we're a little more stable in our weather conditions now, so we can do a little more spreading like this. Um, so some of those bees that it's brought over will stay here, some of them will go back. But there's a lot of seal brood in there and, and it's gonna be hatching and, and they'll be good as far as keeping all that warm. I'm gonna kinda smoke these bees down. One of the things I like to do is get, get rid of that burk home before I put that queen excluder on because it kinda holds it up. Now we're gonna go ahead and super this colony. I'm just putting one on today. I'll be coming back in the next day or two to go ahead and super them on up. But I'm getting one on here to give them some room. I don't have the built-in frame spacers on this. Now when I'm supering, if at all possible, I always like to put the, uh, the, the first super, I like it to be drawn out. And the reason is because the bees sometimes are a little hesitant to come up through that queen excluder. So we go ahead and get that, that problem solved. So what I'm going to do with the rest of these frames, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this feeder. The rest of these frames I'm going to put up here. And what I like to do is I like to go ahead and stack them in there because we got space. We only had eight frames. I like to put the brood together. So these are all empty frames here. Like I say, this colony wasn't that strong. And I forgot I brought two frames over. So that's a completely empty frame. So in this colony, we have one kind of partial frame of brood that we can use in another colony. Now we're just gonna leave that for right now and then we're gonna come back. Now what we're gonna do is when we get done here with doing the entire apiary like this, I'm gonna come back and if you give it like 20 minutes, even if you have to shake the bees down to find the queen, if you if you look look back at one of my other videos, I'll show you how to do a split without, without finding the queen. Um, and that's where we just shake the bees down and then put a queen excluder in and set the box back on top. So with this method here, we go through and we set our bottom up and then we set that box back on, shake, shake the bees down if we didn't find the queen, and then put the queen excluder on, set that box back on top. Um, and if you give that like 20, 30 minutes, so by the time I get done with this apiary, I can come back 
and bees will have migrated back up onto that brood and honey up in the top. So no matter, no matter if we find a queen or not, we're good. So we have down this row so far, we still have several to go, but we have resource frames on top. There's some brood, there's some foundation, there's some empty frames, there's some honey, all various things. And what we're gonna do with that is those are gonna be our our nuke splits or our, our um, or full full hive splits. I mean, you can mi mix and match things together. So if we want five frames of brood and a full hive split, we'll go down through here and we'll find five frames of brood. We'll find a couple frames of honey, a couple empty frames, and then we'll we'll take that to another apiary, slap a queen in there, slap a queen cell in there, whatever you have, and then we're gonna have a couple splits. It's not that you know if I have. 10 hives that I'm gonna get 10 splits. It's not not like that. We're just gonna use those resources because some of those resources are gonna get used to balance up some of these other colonies. Because every colony is not always the same strength. We're gonna move on to another colony now. We want all this brood to be hatching and this hive to just absolutely blow up. Right when that honey flow hits. If they blow up too soon, they swarm. This hive has got a lot of honey. Huh, that's a full frame of honey there. And that's good, that'll get them, that'll get them by. This brood takes a, takes a lot of resources to raise. You gotta kinda work fast, cause the bees will wanna start robbing this time of year. This frame is uh, kinda mixed, it's got some pollen in it, and it's got a lot of empty cells too. I'm actually going to leave it down here. That'll give the queen a little somewhere to lay. And you know, brood is not all created equal. Sometimes you have a small patch of brood. Sometimes you have a large patch of brood. You just got to kind of, you got to balance that out to where all the colonies look about the same. See, this one's got some emerging brood here, just capped here, and larva here. And that's, uh, that's probably 80% full of brood, 85. Nice new frame, I like that going down in the bottom. Because these are the frames that's probably going to be on here come next spring this time of year, right down here. These are pretty much the frames this hive is going to have. until we do this again. Nice fat frame of brood. Got a lot of pollen. Like I said, some, some frames are not created equal. The only brood that's in this frame is right here. The rest of this is pollen. So I'm probably gonna yank this one up in the top. The other side looks good. Not to say that's bad, it's just that we're trying to set these up to be as strong as possible. Wow, big airplane. There's a good frame of honey. So that's going to be our far right frame right there. Now let's go up here and see what we got. Frame of honey. Let's see. Got honey. Brood. A nice big or a nice new frame. I love it. And it's got some honey in it too, which would be good. They'll eat a lot of that honey in the next the next couple weeks as uh because there's just really not a lot coming in right now. That's some mixed brood there, has some eggs in it. We'll leave that down there in the bottom. There's my queen. Hey, hey. Got lucky. I didn't have to shake them down.
you're missing a mark. I'm gonna mark her real quick with last year's color. And I'm just gonna put her here between the frames where I don't have to worry about her. I'm gonna put this frame down at the bottom too. It's a nice fat frame of brood. And there's some young larva, a nice brand new drawn out comb. I love to put that right down in the bottom. So now we've done that. Again, this colony, we didn't have to rob from anybody else. We had plenty right here. I'm gonna stick us a quint excluder on here. This is not the fastest way to convert these back, but it's the way I prefer because I see what's in the bottom. I get to make my adjustments in the bottom to set this colony up the way I like them, get some nice fresh frames moved down. I can balance the entire apiary. This sets me up to where I don't have to go digging through this colony so much um, after today. We can focus on making honey. I'm gonna put my honey frames together and my brood frames together. So here's a brood frame. Just kind of set them in the middle. That way if I go to another colony and I need it, I can jump right in here and grab it. Or when I get ready to pull my spares out I can so I got one extra brood frame in this colony some colonies you end up with four or five extra brood frames and and uh, no honey and some you end up with no extra brood frames after all from others like that first time we went in but hang with us just a minute and I'll show you what I do with those resource frames when we're all done Now this right here is what's called a barrier to expansion and often leads to swarming. This is another reason we go in the bottom right now. I goofed up at some point and put a frame of foundation in the bottom of this hive. And if you notice those first three frames I pulled out were basically empty, no brood, because this queen does not want to cross over and the bees don't want to cross over because they're not making enough nectar and I'm not feeding heavy enough for them to draw this foundation and move on. I don't like foundation in the bottom. That's a barrier and often causes swarming. And I'm just hearing the roar of this colony and seeing no bird. Got a queen problem. Crap happens. Good news is I got right queen cells right now. challenge is they may have a virgin queen running around in here that's frustrating let's set this colony back up then he's got a queen in there Now, pending that queen getting back, mated, that colony will make honey. We just balance them up with brood. They'll have brood emerging immediately, just like the rest of the colonies. By the looks of her, she's either been out to mate or very close. She may go out today if we'll leave them alone. All right, so we have this apiary set up now um, with all of our resource frames up top. And now what we're gonna do is just go down through here and 
rip these resource frames off and depending on what you have i didn't end up with as much brood here as i would have liked i wish i would have filmed the apiary yesterday i was working in um but today what i'm just going to do is i'm actually just going to set up some queen maiden nukes off of what i have left i don't really have enough and uh i got a lot of sales coming off tomorrow so what i'm probably going to do is just set up like a one frame brood one frame of honey and then fill it out with some empty frames um in each of these this little cardboard nukes i'm just going to make some queens out of them um but you could take all these resource frames and and make up 10 frame hives stick a queen cell in it go ahead and put a super on it and make honey off of it um with two weeks to go so those queens would be mated by the time the honey flow came on you could just go back and check make sure they made it back and if they didn't you know you do something different with it put another queen cell in it but if the queen makes it back those hives will make honey um you could make up five frame nukes ready to roll um with like three frames of brood a frame of honey one empty and then a queen cell but like i said what i'm going to do here is just one frame of brood per box and uh one frame of honey and we're just going to run that through here rip these frames off That's a frame of honey. That's a frame of brood. Again, we already know the queen's in the bottom. And uh, I have three, I have three more frames of brood there, so grab another box frame of brood frame of honey frame of brood Frame of honey. So this box is done. Um, now I know that I have some empty frames and stuff, stuff like that down the line. So we'll finish filling out these nukes. So I'm just gonna shake that down. And this hive is ready for honey other than putting another box on there. That, the bee numbers don't look that great right now, but you gotta remember we put like seven, eight frames of brood in the bottom. So they're just gonna explode in the next two to three weeks which is when our honey flow starts. So that's what we're looking for. I don't have much brood on down. So pretty much this right here is, this one in the next side is about all the brood I have. So this brood. Honey. Make up one full just for the heck of it. Brood. 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 Young larva brood. Frame of honey. We put another frame of honey in this one. And we'll finish that out as we go down the line. The 
put this in one of the nukes. They'll draw that out. Well, they're kind of queenless. Now, all these extra frames that we're putting in here that are just empty or have honey on them, all those bees are going with it. That'll help cover that brood where there's not really a, a full complement of bees on that brood frame. But it'll, it'll work out. I'm going to shake an extra frame in there when we're done because we'll have some extra frames. Now I'm down here to where I don't have any more brood, so I'm just gonna fill these hives out from here. Now this is the full colony we did, and I, I ended up putting uh, four good frames of brood in here, and then one kind of small frame, and then the rest is kind of empty and honey frames. And really, this, this little colony right here, I'm gonna put a queen cell in it tomorrow. And that little colony, it's not gonna make a lot of honey, but it will make some honey. If that queen gets mated and all that good stuff we don't, we don't miss, um, that hive will make a little bit of honey. They may make one super, possibly two, depending on how the flow is. Um, we could have started it up just like we set these up if we had more resources, but we don't. Um, so if we put like seven, eight frames and then drop the queen cell in there, that hive will make just as much honey as the rest of them. So depends on what you have available. One other thing too, like this one, all the frames I put in here, I really didn't get enough bees in there. That one has enough because I only have one frame of brood and there's a lot of bees over here that's going to migrate and it'll work for a mating nuke. Um, but this one here, there's really not enough bees really to cover all their brood. So even when you're taking all these frames out, you don't have to use the frames. You can just shake the bees in here and then store those frames. That works great for later if you need to do a split or something like that, you have a nice drawn out comb. So I'm gonna end up shaking a few extra bees in this one. If any of these frames aren't gonna be used, you notice this one right here is full of pollen. That's a high beetle wax moth uh, heaven. Um, so if you're gonna store any frames uh, for use later, prefer not to use this frames like this with with uh, honey and pollen or anything like that um, as in the middle of the summer it's hard to keep them out of there so typically I'll use these up and then I'll save my my empties like this frame is nice and clean there's nothing in it so that's a good frame we can put in storage All right. we're gonna put a few extra bees in this one That'll be good enough for a mating nuke. They don't have that much brood to take care of. One final thought on uh, when you're setting up nukes like this, it's important to close them up for, I mean, 24 hours preferably because they don't have a queen. Um, sometimes when you first put a hive together like this, they'll, uh, they'll just kind of go out and they'll end up grouping up in one or two colonies and you'll end up with a colony with very few bees in it. Um, so you can put them in a cool place, you know, in a shed out of the sun or something, um, something like that for 24 hours if it's, if it's hot and sunny outside. Um, typically what I do is I, I start them up today, I release them tonight after dark and they'll come out in the morning and do okay, but it's better if you keep them about 24 hours like that. So, well, I hope you enjoyed this video kind of talking about how we break our hives back down to a single deep to run through the flow. and going ahead and getting them supered up and how we set them up kind of equalize the entire apiary so the bee numbers are a little bit different throughout the apiary but by the time all this brood hatches they're going to get really close together and which is that, that's what we want we want to be able to consistently super these colonies and know what's going on with them so anyway thanks for watching like share subscribe appreciate you watching